for a long time, polycythemia vera has, has had a, a pretty standard treatment approach, treatment paradigm, phlebotomies, aspirin, cytoreductive therapy, largely with hydroxyurea. Uh, increasingly pegylated interferon has been used. Uh, ruxolitinib in the second line setting for patients that refractory or resistant or intolerant to hydroxyurea. Um, but this is kind of changing. I think that there is a, a, you know, increased interest in, in um, you know, emerging therapies. I think the two that are uh, most promising and maybe most m furthest along are, are, are ROPEG interferon, um, Besrimi. This is a, a, a kind of a, a longer acting formulation of, of pegylated interferon or interferon uh, given every two weeks instead of weekly, uh, longer half-life, better tolerability, already received approval in, in Europe and, and awaiting um, consideration uh, by the FDA in the U.S., um, overall, this was studied in, in the PROUD PV and the, the continuation PV studies um, and, and really showed um, not so much early on, but later on, uh, superiority to hydroxyurea or best available therapy in terms of calc control um, and also a really encouraging signal in terms of reducing the JAK2 mutant allele burden over time. Um, and, and this has got people talking about um, what, what the really the implications of, are of, of reducing this JAK2 allele burden to lower levels and what levels matter. So, so I think that's very um, exciting and, and certainly it builds on kind of the increased excitement there already was around pegylation interferon, um, you know, in recent years. Uh, the other exciting development and uh, agent would be PTG300 or Rusfertide. Um, this is a hepcidin mimetic that's specifically being looked at in patients that have uh, a heavy phlebotomy need, so at least a phlebotomy every two months or so, um, regardless of different cytoreductive therapy. So they could be just uh, phlebotomy and aspirin alone. They could be patients on interferon, hydroxyurea, ruxolitinib. Um, but in a phase two study, it shows that when you when these patients who were requiring phlebotomies quite regularly were enrolled, um, this agent really reduced the need for phlebotomies pretty drastically. Uh, which, which can be very meaningful for patients who, who have to come in for phlebotomies. And, and phlebotomies certainly uh, are inconvenient. Uh, they're, they're not always well tolerated. They cause fluid shifts. They exacerbate iron deficiency um, and, and really are, are somewhat of an archaic way of controlling blood counts. And so this is certainly a, an exciting development that may have the ability to, to obviate the need for phlebotomies going forward. 